verse 14 asayo maha hata shatru anishe che paran api ishvaro ham aham bhogi sido ham balavan sukhi this foe is slain by me and others also i shall slay i am the lord i am the enjoyer i am successful mighty and happy this verse shows that the asura demon always thinks with anger in his mind he thinks that this foe is slain by me and i have killed this foe i also slay other foes i am the lord i am the enjoyer and i am the person enjoying i am successful i am mighty and i am happy this is the language of asura demons the word apara means others he thinks that i have slayed all these foes and i will slay all these others as well i am the lord i am the enjoyer i am successful mighty and happy this is the language of asura demons this is language filled with arrogance you can see his arrogance in each and every one of his sentences this is an asura he thinks aham me aham me aham me look in this verse how many aham me there are ishvaro ham aham bhogi sido ham balavan sukhi i am the lord i am the enjoyer i am successful mighty and happy this is the language of rakshas demon this is the language of asura demons in the shrimad bhagavat it is written very nicely that a person who is born in a great family has performed great karmas has attained a beautiful body has attained wisdom has attained has attained opulence has attained wealth and has attained all of this and yet if the person does not get any pride then consider that he has an abundance of grace from god this is because all of these things are such that pride comes the person becomes arrogant when a person get, even gets five rupees then he walks around holding his head up high we tell him to look around him and he says look what i have done why should i look down oh clever person you will bump into something and fall to the floor that is why you should look down his face is full with so much pride if a person is born in a great family has a good education has attained wisdom has opulence has performed great karmas has attained great wealth and has attained all of this the scriptures say that a human being who has become filled with pride as a result of wealth or power first of all considers himself to be full of good qualities sarve guna kanchana mashayanti all virtues attach themselves to wealth he feels that because i have earned so much wealth i am such a great person he thinks that all good qualities reside in him he says that has all of this come to me by itself it comes in but when it comes does that this mean that they are very good person first of all this person begins to think that i am full of good qualities second he thinks that he is all powerful that he can do anything third he thinks that all he is knowing and that he knows everything he thinks that he understands everything he begins to think this he begins to jump up and down like a drunk elephant or a drunk monkey great speakers say that markatasya surapanam tatra rushika danshanam tan madhya bhuta sanchiro yadva tadva bhavishyati a monkey itself is very fickle but jumped up and down so much more when it drinks alcohol then a scorpion bites it then it becomes haunted by a ghost now only what does not happen is good A monkey itself is very fickle but when it drinks alcohol then how much does it start jump up and down increase then a scorpion bites it a monkey itself is very fickle then it is intoxicated and alcohol now a scorpion bites it so he gets the pain of it and if this was not enough then it becomes haunted by a ghost then consider that only what that which does not happen has happened is good A human being is just like a monkey. This is because the mind is very fickle. I once read a joke somewhere. A thinker was given a discourse saying that a human being is a fragment of the supreme soul. The thinker was given a very beautiful discourse. He told everyone that a human being is a fragment of God and that we all we have all come from God. There there was a so-called clever person in the crowd who asked that, "I am a student of science and I have studied the theory of evolution by Darwin." We have studied this from our childhood and my father was also a professor of science. My father has taught me the human beings were born from monkeys. The thinker said, I am not talking about your family. Your family must be exceptional. A monkey is very fickle. When a person gets beauty, then beauty is in an intoxication. Then a scorpion by the name of wealth bites him and the ghost by the name of power haunts him. Then only that which does not happen will be good. He like a frog, but he is trying to get to the portion of an elephant. If despite attaining wealth and power one does not become a slave to wealth and power thinks that of course I have it but it's not like I am not great because of this wealth I am great because I am God's one who has this attitude has self confidence but for what he does not think that he is great because of the objects but he thinks that 
that these objects are prashad, oblations from God because he is God and becomes, because the grace of God is sharing on him. If I am the son of a millionaire father, then would I not wear a nice shirt? If I am the son of the owner of the whole world, then would I not live nicely? Why should I not live nicely? He does not have an arrogance. All these things are prashad, oblations from the supreme soul. If a person does not get this arrogance, then consider them to be a true divine person. This is a divine person. And Asura thinks that I have slain this person. Who, who are we to slay any person? Who are we to slay other people? Are we going to slay our enemies? Then kill them before finishing them. You will be finished. How can you guarantee that you will kill this person and that you will do this? This person has this person has such an illusion that he thinks that he is the Lord. He is powerful, that he is the owner of all. This is what he feels like. He has a feeling of ownership. The sense of possession is demonic characteristic. This is a person who keeps thinking, mine, 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 mine. The more that feeling of me and mine increases, then the more that the de demonic feeling increases. We say while performing arti, worship, ceremonies of God, Tara tujko arpan, kya lage mere. We surrendered what is yours to you, because nothing is mine. Everything that there is, is God's. There is nothing of ours. I will give you one example about the difference between a divine person and a demonic person. Both of them have everything. Do not think that a divine person walks around like a beggar. A divine person has wealth and everything. I'll give you an example of two industrialists. Both of them have industries. Both of them, have, both of them run big factories. Around five people work in both of their factories. They regularly pay their salaries and make their, the best profits of all. They both live in the nicest houses, uses the nicest cars and everything. Both of them do this. Both of them wear nice clothes. They both have the nicest material pleasures, but there's a lot of difference in their thoughts. One person thinks that I am running such a big factory, I pay salaries to 500 people every month. This means that I am running 500 families. Consider there to be at least five people in each house. Five times 500 is all equal to two and a half thousand. And therefore, I'm filled with the I f I'm filling their stomachs of two and a half thousand people. If I were not running this factory, if I did not have this much power, and if I did not have this much intelligence, then what would happen to these two and a half thousand people? I'm doing so much work. The industrious thinks like this, and the second industrial thinks like that. God has showered a lot of grace on me. God has, give, has made me an instrument to run such a big factory. God has given me this intellect and this power, and because of the grace of God, and this factory is running very nicely. Therefore, every month, 500 families and at least 2,500 people are being nourished. This is God's grace, because God is running the whole world, and I am God's. God must have love and feeling towards me, and that is why God has given me the responsibility of these 2,500 people. I become the instrument of God. God's grace is sharing on me. He goes to God every day and praises that. God, you have given me a lot of grace. If you feel like giving me any other task, then please give it to me, Lord. Both of them do the exact same work, but both, in, are, both their thoughts are different. That is why there is a big difference in both their lives and in their minds. The first person runs a factory, makes profit and does everything, but he constantly... He is constantly in tension because he keeps thinking that I am doing this, I am doing this, I am doing this. This is the feeling that he has and the second human being does the same work with as much efficiency and in fact more efficiency than the first person because he knows that, Lord, you are giving me the power and that is why I am doing it. One person running a factory has become with a demonic attitude. The other person is also running a factory has become a divine person. I have to make the clarification with the support of Sri Krishna's words because many people think that a divine person is a person who walks who only walks around with a prayer beads in his hand. It is not like that. A divine person does not run away from life. He stays right in the center of life. He performs all the activities. Divinity and the demonism are characteristics. Divinity and demonism are natures. They are attitudes. They are natures. It depends on the way in which you are performing work.